What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be comparing the Reebok Nano 11 to the Nano 10. Before we dive into this comparison, I do wanna say that these are very different shoes compared to like how the 9 and 10 were. The 9 and 10 were very similar in nature. They performed pretty consistently. The only real big difference was like a reworked upper. These models are very different. So we have a lot of folks who either love or hate the Nano 11. And I think a lot of that ties into thinking that the 11 will be just like the 10. They were marketed very differently. So the construction reflects how they were marketed. So three major differences right off the bat with these models is the reworked midsole and outsole. So the Nano 11 has a float ride midsole, while the Nano 10 has more of the high density EVA foam midsole, has this bigger plastic heel wrap. So from a stability standpoint, the 10 is much more stable when it comes to a variety of movements, especially with heavier lifting. The second major difference is between these models is just how they kind of feel and fit. So the 11, is not the most gentle on the heel when breaking it in. The boot is similar in height to the 10. However, the boot comes in a bit more. Great for heel slip, but breaking these in takes a lot longer than the 10 did, than the 9 did, than the 8 even did. So the overall fit and feeling is slightly different just because they reworked the heel cup a little bit. It seems like they also reworked the toe box. The toe box in the 10 is slightly wider in my opinion, and you're able to splay the toes a bit better in the 10 and the previous models of the Nano. Then the third major difference to note is just the overall reworked upper. So as we can see here on each of these models, the 10 has a bit more of like a structured flex weave, feels a bit heavier in nature, feels a bit more durable, a bit more resistant to abrasion, while the 11 has this more lightweight, maneuverable, and breathable upper. Now, neither is necessarily bad, they're just very different. So three differences right off the bat, we have reworked midsoles and outsoles, we have a reworked kind of overall fit and feeling of each model, and a reworked upper. All right, so now let's get a little bit more granular talking about performance between these two shoes. I'm gonna cover stability and versatility. So from a stability point of view, I'm gonna take the 10 all freaking day. The overall outsole and midsole are incredibly supportive. So if you're lifting heavy when it comes to cleans, deadlifts, squats, the 10 is gonna be your better bet. Plastic heel cup back here provides a lot of support. I love the split outsole construction, honestly, on the nine and 10, I thought that was a big hit. And I love the meta split up here because it does give a little bit of reactivity in the forefoot while promoting overall stability. The Nano 11, isn't necessarily like unstable. It's not like a running shoe when it comes to the overall like thickness of the midsole. It just has a little bit more give under heavier loads. Now I'm not gonna say, oh, if you can't train heavy in this model, you certainly can. But if we're comparing these two models specifically, I'm taking the 10 for stability. And that's just because the Nano 11 was marketed as like the shoe of fitness. It's not so much a hardcore CrossFit slash lifting focused model. So when we look at the overall marketing, once again, it's pretty easy to see that this shoe was probably not intended to be marketed towards that hardcore lifting crew when it comes to cross training shoes. Now let's talk about versatility. So generally when reviewing cross training shoes, I always see that when stability goes up, versatility tends to go down. But in the case for the 11 and 10 right here, it's pretty even, honestly, because a lot of folks will wear their 10 for a variety of activities. They've been out for over a year now, so we do understand that they can be worn for a variety of stuff, including in wads, workouts, hit training, whatever it might be. But if we are looking at just the overall construction feeding into that versatility aspect, I do think the 11 somewhat has the edge, and that's again because that float ride energy foam midsole is very responsive. The reworked outsole provides a lot of traction on a variety of surfaces, plus the upper is a lot more breathable, feels more lightweight, and honestly accommodating for a variety of activities. So if you're doing like HIIT training or just more your recreational training, I think the 11 might take the edge with versatility, but again, like it's really close. And I don't think a lot of people will necessarily be like, oh, that one's definitely better for versatility. They're both decent in their own rights, but I do think that the 11 does feed slightly more into versatility because of the overall reworking of the upper, midsole, and outsole of this shoe. So when it comes to price for these two models, you can expect to pay around $130 USD. Now I know you can find the 10 on different websites with different colorways for a little bit less than that. So if you are trying to save a little bit and you're sold on the 10, then I would definitely say do your research and poke around and see what you can find. But I'm hopeful since the 11 just released, the 10 will see a nice decrease. But then again, since these are very different shoes, I'm actually curious to see if Reebok is gonna drop the 10's price sooner than later, because if they're very different and there's still a lot of demand for the 10, then why would they drop it if people are still buying it? So as for price, $130 USD right now, 
But if you are on the market for the 10, I would definitely say search around because you could probably find colorways that fit your budget a little bit better if $130 USD is a bit steep for you. All right, so now I'm gonna rip through a couple questions that I've seen people ask before on reviews and other videos about the performance focus of each model. So which shoe is best for CrossFit? If you've been listening so far, I guarantee you could guess that I'm gonna take the Nano 10. Just because when we think about CrossFit specifically, generally runs will be on the shorter side, lifts can go from light to very heavy. So if we're looking for a shoe that can tackle lighter runs, agility focus work, but also hold its own under heavier lifts, the 10 is gonna be a better bet in my opinion. Now, which shoe is best for HIIT training? So high intensity interval training, which shoe would be better? I'm gonna have to go 11 just because again, with that float ride energy foam, like I thought the shoe was very responsive. I mean, after the break in period where my blisters finally subsided, I actually really enjoyed this shoe for agility focus work, jumps, so plyometrics, and also you can take this shoe on slightly longer runs. So that being said, when it comes to like the impact of a lot of HIIT workouts, I think the 11 is gonna be a better bet overall. All right, so now which shoe is best for running? So note when I say running, I'm talking about more of like our shorter or medium length runs. So anything shorter for me would be like two to three miles, and then medium would be like three, six, maybe seven miles. So when it comes to shorter runs, both of these shoes will work. They might not be the most comfortable, but they will get the job done for you. Now from a more medium length run focus, I think the 11 is gonna be better. Again, that midsole is a bit more responsive, a bit more reactive. It's gonna be a bit more forgiving for longer mileage. Now, if you're on this video watching for a longer run focus shoe, I would say look at different models other than the 10 and 11. These are not designed for lengthy runs, so let's call a lengthy run anything over seven miles. If you wanna run more than that, I would definitely say look at other running focus models. All right, so now which model is best for heavy lifting? You know I'm taking the Nano 10 here. Um, if you've watched this video up until this point, I've made it pretty clear that the 10 is much more stable under a variety of loads. So if stability is your main focus and you want to shoot a train heavier in, opt for the 10, I think that's going to be the better bet. All right, so now which model is best for the money? So as of right now, both of these shoes are still sitting around $130 USD on Reebok's site. Now, as I noted in the price section, I do think you can find the 10 for a little bit less if you shop around and look for other colorways that might not be like the bigger popular ones. So if you are on a budget and you do want a slightly more lifting focused shoe when it comes to training heavier, then I think the 10 is gonna be the better call for the money. But as of right now, they're really too close to give any definitive win to either of these models. All right, so now let's go over some construction differences between each of these models. So making our way up here at the toe, the outsole wraps a bit wider on the 10 compared to the 11. Personally, I prefer a wider wrap because it's a bit better for durability from a toe dragging, toe dragging aspect. The flex weave upper is a bit thicker on the 10 versus the 11. As you can see, it moves a lot better compared to the 10 over here. A lot more uh, maneuverability in the 11 compared to the 10. Now, which is better for durability? They've both been decently solid so far. I think once the 11 is out for longer, we'll be able to tell a bit more when it comes to the overall durability of the upper. But making our way up here to the laces, so we have a bit more of a durability focus on the laces for the 10 here. As you can see, the bottom laces are protected. Over here on the 11, it has a lacing structure that's similar to honestly the Speed TR, if I'm not mistaken. Overall, reinforced like leather synthetic up on each lace hole, which is good for durability, but I'm really curious to see if people use this for rope climbing and they do like an S-lock where the rope is over the four or midfoot if it's gonna last and stand the test of time. So looking at the 11's midsole construction, we have that float ride energy foam. So as you can see, there's a bit more give to it compared to the 10, which has this plastic heel wrap. You can't really compress it. Both of these have like that high density foam throughout the midsole, so very reactive, pretty supportive. Um, the 10 is once again gonna be a bit more supportive though. They each have a plastic heel cup. Now the tins does come up through the midfoot here and wraps fully around. We just have a little split back here versus the 11, which just has like this kind of reinforced plastic heel clip here, but it doesn't feel super incredibly stable. Um, it does help kind of lock down that boot, but it's like nothing substantial compared to like this plastic wrap, which seems a bit more sturdy in nature. Now making our way to the boot. Both of these boots are good for preventing heel slip. Your heel is not gonna slip out of these, but what I will say, and I mentioned this before, if you look at the lip here, see how the 10 kind of comes up here versus the 11 that kind of like almost like closes in your heel. Expect a longer break in here. 
You can probably see some blood still on the heel back here. Um, overall, it's not the biggest issue. Just wear longer socks when you're breaking in the 11, so then that way you can bypass any blistering right away. I wore short socks, made that mistake, so be forewarned. Uh, making our way to the outsole here on the 10, split outsole, meta split up here. Overall, decent traction, very stable. I thought the outsole on the 10 and 9 were one of my favorites when it comes to the Nano model. I love that split outsole. Over here on the 11, pretty consistent outsole all the way up. We have that foot ride energy foam where you can actually see through up here on the forefoot. Very responsive once again. Very forgiving when it comes to hit workouts and plyos. Overall, those are the biggest construction callouts I have for these models. All right guys, that wraps up my comparison between the Reebok Nano 10 and the Reebok Nano 11. Personally, I like both of these shoes. They're just very different. And when I reach for them for different performance aspects, I keep that in mind. If you have any questions about these models, drop them down below. So if you have any questions in regard to how you train and which model would be best, I'll be happy to answer anything you got. And as always, like the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.